Thank you very much for joining me live. And I, I hope we have a wonderful time this hour of drawing and meditation together. As I have been thinking, there is so much going on today. We have winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, the darkest night, has symbolic, is very symbolic uh, holiday, not holiday, uh, the, uh, observation for a long, long time, world culture. We have the great conjunction with the Jupiter and Saturn kind of, if not meeting, but you can see the sky. If you have clear sky in your area, please try to look about an hour of the sun, sunset southwest direction, the brightest star, Christmas star that happens once in 800 years. That the last time we've been seen this conjunction 800 years ago, significant. And, and I also included symbolic meaning is today is the spiral that we're going to draw today as um, is what we can do to help ourselves to emerge from this time of hibernation, I don't know, darkness or emotional, you name it, and you feel it. It's also a auspicious time for saying goodbye to everything when we don't need anymore. All things that we grew out of, all habits, and emerge in a new year. I'm not going to repeat it because there's so much and you it will take a long time just to explain. And I, I would like to make it short and sweet. And as much as your curiosity guides you, you can find a lot of information online. I've been reading and reading for almost two days, trying to get the gist out of it. I wasn't completely uh, satisfied with the answer I found. I couldn't find any answers, like deep answers, that could point to ancient tradition and the nature of tradition. There were sources that were lost, how the, that was celebrated. And probably part of it is also was suppressed by maybe religions as well. So all these pagan traditions were suppressed by religion. So truly, I couldn't find anything that would open my eyes and something that I didn't know before about the solstice and about the celebration, ancient celebrations. Because if you think about it, such a huge event, the birth of the sun, so-called new cycle of light starting, couldn't be just left out, but all the nations of the world. And in those days, they depended so much on the sunlight. It meant light, it meant warmth, it meant food. And with this, I will show a short presentation just to remind you. I'm very much sure that everybody knows, even probably more than me. So some are probably specialists more in this area, and I just use basic knowledge. So I assume that everybody has at least something about knowledge about the neurographic line, uh, rounding, and the circles. You don't need to know much. Well, I'll just move. And today also, I would like to share with you what I do with the brush. So I have two options. How we're going to draw? You can draw traditional with traditional markers and pencils, or you can draw with the brush. So I will show with the brush. Okay. So it is very much the same. It's just the matter of your skills. Essentially, it's the same. We're using pencil or brush. Uh, from darkness to light, with the solstice neural spiral. So it's no surprise that every nation celebrated this important event, like a winter solstice. They associated it as a natural, like natural new year, like the birth of the sun. And it was widely celebrated by people gathering together, eating and drinking. We know that a pagan Yuli, which is a Norse people from the North, and that's many traditions that came merged with our Christmas. That's a green and red, Christmas tree, bonfires, light Christmas tree. They all come from Yuli tradition of celebration. Very widely known celebration was Saturnalia, dedicated to Saturn in Rome. 
and celebration lasted for 10 days. There was a lot of drinking, merriment, eating, and everything else. We're not going to name that, but it was quite, quite wild, according to our history. So actually tradition of eating at that time as much as possible and spending much time with other people is common to all the other traditions. It was believed that the way you spend three days and solstice means sun stands still, that astronomically is when an axis remains in that position like tilted 23 degrees and then it will start moving after that three days of standing still in the opposite direction that will bring us eventually to summer solstice when we have most most delight the longest day well especially in the north in the far north and far south those are very noticeable events and when we get close to southern countries like equator the difference is not that big tradition you if you know the culture there is so much celebrated around this time Saint Lucia Day in Scandinavia, Yalda Night in Iran, the Dongjin Festival and the Festival of Light in China and East Asia. There was eating and drinking and many, many, many other. So it was also believed that it's a time was associated not only with natural like seasonal change, but also with spiritual rebirth. And that's what we're trying to do today and at least to draw our, press our ideas in our drawing. Not only that, but today is also the night of the great conjunction when Saturn and Jupiter come so close together that they look almost as one star, a Christmas star, what they call it. The best way to see it, if uh, it's a look around one hour after sunset, in direction of southwest and it's going, going as it shows on the map it's low above the horizon it's also significant when jupiter which is the largest planet and also it's the uh, it's attribute of expansion abundance and saturn it's also about discipline and timeliness so they come together creating this huge influence and we can also as we are drawing circles, we can include and call upon uh, the power of those planets. Uh, this conjunction is also thought to be very special because it happens in Aquarius, the sign of social change. And I mentioned before that the time to release old habits in order to make way to new ones. The point is to stay, re it's remain open. Other elements that we're going to deal with today is the spiral. There is so much they talk about spirals. It's another topic on its own. Spirals are known from ancient times. It's probably one of the most oldest known symbols. So what's amazing that they are met all over the world like petroglyphs that carved on rocks or painted on rocks. And they're very similar in design all around the world as if all the nation people could communicate. So they're very similar, as you can see, there's in, uh, in Greece, in Egypt, in South Africa, in South America, everywhere if you can look at the uh, history, how much uh, the spiral was used. It's not surprising because the spiral, spiral is considered a symbol of expansion, the symbol of growth. It's from within the outside. It's believed to be connecting us with the universe. It's coming from within and outside. It's like a symbol of growth, expansion, and of course, spiritual growth. However, it's very little, as I mentioned today, it's very little known about true traditions, about the true rituals that was associated with spirals. And we can only guess and, uh, and give their our meanings to all these 
symbols and spirals like many others. We can only guess and experience ourselves. Spiral is also very much known in nature. It's probably one of the fundamental shapes that energy, uh, the energy is transmitted in nature. From our structure that double, the double helix of DNA that's present in every cell to spiral galaxies that span millions of years. The spirals are present in plants, in animals, and uh, such a uh, phenomenon like a uh, movement of water, phenomena like whirlpools and currents and tornadoes. What we can use the spirals today to draw our like expansion, our moving toward the light, like from darkness, from this dark period of hibernation to light. Also, when I was researching this topic, I had this idea about spiral as the symbol of emerging from dark time before I started research. And I, I thought the spiral as associated with our movement is probably more than any other. And then when I started research, I found that that solstice spiral is used as an annual walk, as a ritual, and like Waldorf schools, and some other, and for the Advent traditions. And I found it was, it's very interesting how they combine what they do. They build spirals in the ground, with surround with evergreens, and that indicates the coming in the center, the movement from summer solstice coming in, and then posing in the middle, it's like a labyrinth, and coming out. So today, we're going to draw the spiral that take us from the center out. So it's like one. So what I would like to mention, there are four types of spiral. So today, we're going to draw the one that's, that's coming from center outwards, expanding outwards. There are others and clockwise direction. There are also spirals that counterclockwise direction, that's considered spirals of expansion, and there are uh, contraction spirals that come from direction from outside to the center. But today we're going to draw the spiral that connects us from, from the center, outside, outwards. With this, we can start, we go to our boards and start drawing. So I practiced various drawings. I'm going to use, as I suggested in the description, a dark panel. It's very dark, navy, it's probably this one. It's square at a size 10, 10 by 10 inches. And it is, it's not black, it's very dark navy blue. I painted it myself and I do. So the final, there are two options. If you have a color, uh, if you have a colored board that you can use, preferably dark, you can follow my example. If not, you can draw a traditional. Just the just in reverse, the lines, the figures will be the same. It's just a matter whether you use dark pencil or light pencil. So they are both they both represent the same. And for this occasion, I uh, I felt that the most suitable is draw on the on the black surface on the dark surface representing light, our light of consciousness. I will use I'll find the center. My board. And that's the focus of what with our theme for today is emerging from, a, it's like from the center, we've been there within ourselves, outside, toward the light, toward the light of new year. You can uh, let's think for 
a few seconds what we would like to leave behind and what we would like to what we've learned and what we want to take with us expand evolve Now, as I take approximately the center, and I, I think I'm, I'll try to draw eight, uh, seven level, seven, seven turns, like seven level of spiral. So make sure that the closer they were, they are, they are. So when you draw these lines, the tighter the spiral the more energy it contains. It's like a spring. The tighter you press it, the more energy you store in it. So it be careful if you, in your part of the world, if you're drawing right now and it's evening, it's very energizing drawing. So if it's, uh, so you draw many revolution, you will, I it will activate, it will, will not be able to fall asleep quickly. So that's from my personal experience. Uh, then you can, how you can do it, you can do a, a few minimum, at least minimum four turns, like, like here, one, two, three, four, and five. And desirable is to end our spiral on top, so expanding, so not on the bottom, but somewhere at the top area. And before, and how we draw the spiral, I can show it in the, just on paper before trying it on uh, my, uh, my board. So if this is the center, and I will indicate, I, will, I would like to have it seven. So one, 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 one two, three, four, five, six, seven. And every, uh, you, it's not unilateral, you can expand, make it a little bit wider. The turns are getting wider. I'm planning a course um, dedicated to sacred geometry. And there I will probably include how to draw various spirals. So that's my, it's one of my projects. But for now, it's just like, and uh, I, that's what I'm going to do, and just use the line and my hand, and fold my spiral like this. Something like this, as you can see, they become, the distance between the lines become progressively wider. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now I will try to do this on my on my board. This one. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the is seven. Okay. One more. You see, I can correct. So this is my sketch. I hope you can see it. Now I can outline it a little bit stronger.
Now, as I'm outlining, I'm moving my hand slightly and turn it, the original sketch, into the neurographic line. So I could continue drawing with it. It looks very nice, like using the white pencil, a white marker on a dark surface. But one of my preferred tools is the brush. That's also one of the classes that I'm planning to give in the future, drawing with the, with the brush. If you would like to try, no problem. You can try with me right now, but otherwise you're welcome to use your pencil or marker or any tool if you prefer. To draw on the surface, I also use not white paint. I found it, what I'm trying to do, I use gesso, white acrylic gesso. There it is. And what I do is it's a white acrylic gesso. So I take a little bit because it's flat, because it's dry, and also it allows to paint on on top of it. So what I do, I add a little bit more, and I dilute it with water. So it's more, more fluid. So many those who are artists and who paint, you probably know what I, what I what I use, but on the other hand, this it works exactly as any paint. So I use my brush and I use a fine brush. And now I start drawing. I position my hand. Oh. And as if I'm using my hand, as I'm using my pencil. I move my hand. And I create a neurographic line using a brush. Yes, it's a little bit inconvenient because I have to come back. And uh, dip the brush. But the effect of using the brush it's very interesting. Plus, I'm as I'm an artist, I feel like very much connected with the with paint, with the brush rather than pencil. This takes a while, even to to continue with my like seven turns. Take your time. I like, we need to concentrate. It is, as I mentioned, it's, it's important time. And take, take time for yourself. My spirals are quite the line is meditative, as indicated by my line.
Okay, so I finished my first my first path along the spiral. So I can probably do another one. So when I change the line, now I can experiment with the nature of the line itself. If I want to indicate like slightly more energy, to give it more energy, less meditative, but more action-wise, so I can I create I change the character of my line. As I'm planning to draw many lines here, I can experiment with various lines and they see how they affect me. So the frequency is different. That's still a neurographic line, but I move my hand more, create, oh, create more waves, okay. So my waves are tighter. Also, we're going to do here. I will, in some areas, I make it so so-called quantum leap from one orbit, from one turn. I jump a line on the next one. So, if you're welcome to to draw this element on your spiral and continue on the next level, but make sure that you always leap forward. You don't go back. So you, what I mean, you don't go back on the lower level. So it's always up. So we're showing our development, it's always forward. Yes, of course, always forward, unless you specifically, you have an idea why you want it to, to go back. The larger your drawing, the tighter your spiral, the more work you have to do with the line. And that drawing can evolve over time. You can add more lines every day, like a day, one day, another. You do not need to finish it within one day. Like for example, here this drawing. It's, it's very similar. So you can see I have quite a few, like a few lines. And they gem, um, connect some layer. Also, it's possible to add figures. Spiral. So what it's talking about is like time. So we're looking at it from perspective of time. So this is time and it's final, it's moving on. So I can continue like for example, here I begin the center, start moving and then here up and I create and I move, continue moving.
Okay, maybe if I want, I can. Next level. Add more lines. And to speed up the process, I just make it leaped to the next level. Okay, so we have like a basic drawing. So now you're welcome to draw as many lines as you feel like you necessary. You have to, you know, time. I would like to at least to guide through to the end of the drawing to get to the results. And then you can start adding more lines. If any of us, of you, are familiar with Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, you remember that 12, 12 o'clock, like different uh, time when it changes. So when we move from initial idea, threshold, experience death in our process, and then recovery and freedom, and then it all repeats again. So this, associated with certain events like this one is like going down and then up upward motion so that's why i suggested not to finish your spiral at the bottom we can use any figures that help us in this journey journey along the spiral along the new year on the on our path you can include circles. Like for example, I am thinking about the first one, of course, I will include Jupiter as something really uh, big and strong, a circle that supports me on my journey. And also as I was born as Sagittarius, Jupiter is my <laughs> and the ruling planet. So I will I will call and I will see Syria and I will So this is Jupiter. Sometimes I need this expansion. Sometimes I feel I need more, uh, more freedom. What else could I include? Yes. Uh, so these circles could also symbolize important events in your life or important people that you mean, uh, that you meet in the future. When in the future? We just, it's like programming, programming various possibilities. We don't need to name them, but we, you're welcome to include those elements. Now, probably uh, this area, I may include, feel like, and I use my, my, just my intuition. I move my hand and feel where I would like to position another element. Maybe that's a circle. Maybe it's Saturn. You need a, a spiral again to boost your energy. You can like include like a small booster in any, anywhere. I'm just, okay. Yes. Okay, I move my hand 
Here it is. And I can include this a small spiral again, like an extra element in this specific area. Okay. Would I like to include something else? Yeah. Yes, I still have some areas that I can position elements. I don't know what it is. Like four elements and uh, maybe oh, five. Another is a small one here. Can you position elements outside? Yes, why not? So you can create more circles or other figures supporting anywhere outside. Or you can draw the lines connecting your figure with the background. People greeting us from Paris. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe some other distant planets, events that support us. Again, I can take my, this is like a sketch, and I can draw full strength with my, with my brush. connect you if you know connection you may feel like connecting using round the principle of rounding connecting these elements with a spiral with the lines of the spiral or you can also like feel free if you feel like you need to draw something within this line extra please do you can create extra lines inside, inside the circles, elements. It's a big one, my Jupiter. Again, my spiral. I feel like kind of. What if I connect to extra line and connect it, and take an extra line and connect it. Connect the lines with the the ruler, the Sagittarius supporter. Yes, I just thought about when I was drawing circles, I, I anticipated this question about whether it matters what direction we, we draw circles. You know, and yes and no, if you're sensitive. So, 
and also associated with feminine and masculine. So in this drawing specifically, I would say I don't want to focus. But there is a difference, but I don't think it's it's uh, that important. So I, I didn't experience much change, didn't feel much change without the circle drawing it clockwise and counterclockwise. There are some, like with a spiral, sometimes it's considered, if you draw it clockwise, it's more towards material world. If you go counterclockwise, this is the spiral, it's more towards a non-material world. So I don't know whether, maybe this applies to circles as well. So with, with the spiral itself, it's very well connected to the circle. It's very similar. But the spiral, spiral is considered a feminine figure. The circle is more masculine energy and the spiral is feminine. It's, and it's more resembles even the water. It's related also water, the water element. It's like fluid and water moves and spirals like whirlpools. And I draw circles one. I think right now I feel like what I notice in this particular drawing, I, I'm using and balancing, I start in one direction and then I switch and uh, draw in the opposite direction. I think I want a little bit more of circles in this figure. Maybe a little bit more this one. So those who paint and they know that Jesser has this nice like flat color. I use it only for special effect. I don't paint it with it. And there's a little bit of spiral. But uh, with paint, you have an option to dilute the strength. But with markers, it's not possible. And I used it for figures, shapes. I used more diluted paint and uh, more concentrated on the lines.
So I, I'm going to do one more full spiral and I will and I will like to continue with the applying colors. It feels feels good when we have more more lines coming. Also, spiral is considered quite active element, but those lines they created a more meditative effect. And it seems like this morning for me, I now I'm absolutely calm, relaxed, and uh, but I feel like this morning started not not very. I felt a agitated because of this uh, conjunction and uh, solstice. And maybe a little bit of headache. And then I was, when I saw the light, uh, the light I was very concerned about whether there will be enough light I tried to adjust light, I tried experimenting with different light, nothing really worked in that time approached. And then on and just before the class, I decided to prepare myself a drink, as I always do, because I throw this thing drier, and I squeezed a lemon and I got lemon juice straight in my eyes. It was a few, like the last thing I did before the class. And I started crying. <laughs> and, uh, and sorry, and <laughs> you can imagine what happened with my makeup. Half of it was gone by the time of the class. And that's, that's uh, what happened. And that was the first time that happened. And I couldn't wash this lemon juice, so I have to come to the camera and with my I'm still feeling this lemon juice in my eyes. <laughs> but now it feels everything feels so nice and I don't know. I feel nice and relaxed and much and the spiral, maybe a spiral one helped elevate my mood. So how many lines? That's you know it's up to you. It's what now it's up to you how many lines you would like to draw, how much you would like to work with a spiral, and how many spirals to draw. I will encourage you to continue for if you want to experience the effect of spirals, is to draw I guess um, for let's say for 10 days, or at least a week. So 
connecting. The circle. With the rounding a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is to start coloring. This is a very preliminary drawing. I'm going to include more and more lines. For those who are drawing just with pencils, it's not a, not a problem at all. You just start applying pencils, uh, colors, using your intuition. So you just use your intuition. If anybody who is doing on a dark board, or you would like to see how I apply colors, just a couple minutes, and then I, I prepare. To, I'm trying to get this effect of kind of shining colors radiating from the center to the periphery. I know that the colors, I will not be able to apply this, of the paints that I use, it's not possible to paint on a dark board. I have a solution and I use gesso. First, I will turn this figure, my colors will be black and white. And it's an absolutely permissible just to two colors, black and white, Again, I add a little bit more gesso. So now with it's gesso white, it's good because as it dries, it's possible to paint on, on it without diluting it. So all my all my paints that I use are water based, so that's important for me that that colors do not get mixed with uh, um, with the rest with white. So the white is not smeared over the board. Uh, and I, with my color, yeah, indicate kind of shining from from the center, radiating light. And I draw like rays of light with white. And I do. It's not. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So it's not flat black, but just like a rays. Of It's more like I do not color absolutely everything. Just to leave some dark, dark areas. Like oh, you you can leave white. Again, I'm, there's no specific, I'm using my intuition. Speed of a process, I think I'm going to use a larger brush.
So again, I'm like using to radiating from the center. Like, uh, and my pencil drawing, my original, you can see, you can see I've also used the colors, the radiating from the center. This is my typical way of doing it. You're welcome to follow it or you're not. It's, it's up to you. You can color. There's no restriction. Just use your intuition, your, your sense, your desire. There was a question about brushes. Uh, this brush is a watercolor brush is number three. The one is a medium size brush. And the other brush that I'm using, uh, the fine one, it's the uh, rosemary 10 zero. It's quite, it's quite a long brush. It's almost, as, it's not the length of a rigger, but half length. So I use it because it contains, it can hold more paint. And maybe one more area. Now you're welcome to leave it as black and white. It's also beautiful. It makes sense if it that's comes from Jupiter. No, no, this is from Saturn. Uh, that circle. Okay, kind of what I'm following. Like I'm almost like creating this paint that intensifies the movement. So they follow the lines, to create the movement, to help with the movement, as you can see here. So to apply colors, it's possible to paint on top of it. So now that I have a, a gesso, a gesso allows to, for, to paint on top of it. What I, but I can do, and I use watercolor pencil. So my, uh, is possible to use watercolor pencil or you can use paint, or you can use a, anything. Anything else, or leave it as black and white. So when I will... I, I like this, I have a, intense pencils. They're very intense, but I don't want to create them too intense. So I apply it like very light. Actually, the dark pencil, uh, light pencils will leave mark on the dark background.
as you can see if I leave it just on the dark background it also leaves a little bit of mark quite this nice shimmering effect because the surface it's not paper as a as an artboard painted artboard it has a texture So I like it even like uh, it is, but uh, let's let me see if I can apply moisture, water to create this effect. So you can see the effect is changing because of the ink tank pencils. It's like ink. And it shows that bright on the intense color on the white background. But I will not touch anything on this. This color created on the dark background. If I apply moisture, it will disappear. It is what I have this effect. So it's like this. So we're almost ending uh, until um, approaching the end of the class. I will leave it like this. I hope you had enough information and ideas to finish on your own. So, so anything, anything you can think about, it's good. And the last, and also one of the art elements that I could show you, it's not, my drawing is not finished, drawing painting. It's a great uh, effect of the starry night, like stars on top of everything else. What I did, I again, I, I used gesso and one of my brushes. So here it is. I used my brush. I used my pencil. And what I do, I just lightly hit the brush the pencil and that moisture contained in the brush is nicely spread in nice drops creating this effect of stars and of course i can certain areas i want to create more stars like this Happy creating. So I hope I left you enough ideas of experiment with your drawing and emerge as uh, bright stars in the, your in your life. So there was a question about what effect will it have after uh, 10 days of drawing spirals? Well, ten, uh, drawing spirals is uh, it's energizing, and please you can use your you can experiment like any drawing practiced regularly will create effect. I experimented with spirals. Yes, there was some period when I learned about spirals. I was drawing spirals. And also I experimented with the Flower of Life mandala. The Flower of Life mandala was also very powerful. It created overall like very harmonizing effect. It 
it's hard to describe. So I will try to use this in my initiative and draw the yeah. And I will try to create this my marathon or challenge of drawing spirals. And I will share with you if anybody would and I will post my drawings on Facebook, of course. If anybody would like to join, you're welcome. And also I look forward to you sharing your drawings on the my Facebook group, Neurographic Art and Life. And also if anybody's interested, I'm teaching uh, two courses in January. One is a basic user, and another was is Mandala. And anybody, please, please uh, write to me if you are interested. And of course, I uh, I have announcement on my Facebook pages, uh, pages and profile, and in the group, and uh, on Instagram. I ha wish everyone very happy new beginning with light with confidence with peace in the mind and emotions and now let's hope that all together we will be able to create this new coming year yes as time in transition it will not be easy but changes are not easy and if we are ready for changes everything will go well so thank you so much and uh Wishing you soft and meaningful transition. Thank you. I will see you online sometime soon.